Hi, my name is Dr. Brian Curtis, and I'm one of the paleontologists here at Fossil Crates. And today I'm here to talk to you about Camarasaurus, or depending on the part of the country you're from, Camarasaurus. Either way, this herbivorous giant from the Jurassic was one of the larger dinosaurs that lived during the late Jurassic time and is known throughout the Western United States. Camarasaurus is often joked by my buddy, Ray Wilhite, the Jurassic cow because it's found everywhere, at least parts and pieces are. We know pretty much every bone of a Camarasaurus thanks to a gorgeous specimen that was uncovered at Dinosaur National Monument, CM11338, Camarasaurus lentus. And the Camarasaurus itself is famous for its big skull. As you can see, it has large teeth. Uh, recently, a study came out on a particular Camarasaurus named E.T. that suggests that it may have actually had some kind of lip covering, so the teeth wouldn't have been as toothy grinned as I grew up and still believe them to have been, which if so, is a really exciting discovery. Camarasaurus comes in three species. The one that comes in the ultimate herbivores kit happens to be from the smallest, Camarasaurus lentus. Then there's Camarasaurus grandis, and then Camarasaurus supremus. Now, while supremus gets over 50 tons or so potentially, our little guy, Camarasaurus lentus, gets to be about 50 feet long and around 20 tons or so. So not light by any standard, heavier than pretty much any other vertebrate that walked on land. But as far as sauropods go, still a small on the small side. Now the animal you see behind me is reconstructed with its neck going at a fairly steep angle, similar to what Brachiosaurs do. And we believe that the Camarasaurus neck and teeth tell a great story that how it was part of something called niche partitioning, where it ate right alongside other supergiants like the Diplodocids, Apatosaurus, Supersaurus, Diplodocus, uh, Haplocanthosaurus, Brachiosaurus, all these sauropods plus Barosaurus were found from one quarry, Dimesa dinosaur quarry, as well as other quarries in the west, the Howe Quarry, the Stevens Quarry, Dinosaur National Monument. So you find these locations where multiple large animals were coexisting. Now one could argue they all showed up there because there was a drought or some other catastrophe that put them in place and that's always a possibility. But when you put and look at the teeth of a Camarasaurus and contrast that with the Diplodocus, you find they're very different. Camarasaurus teeth are like awls or chisels, like triangular spoons, very strange, deep roots that go way up in the jaw, and the jaws themselves are very tall. And the Camarasaurus teeth have distinct wear patterns and indicate, and they went all the way around their jaw, unlike the Diplodocids, whose teeth are like pencils and who have teeth only in the front of their mouth, Camarasaurus have teeth that go all the way back. Also, the neck vertebrae of Camarasaurus, they seem to want to go up, whereas the Diplodocids tend to want to go at a more horizontal angle. Uh, there were studies done on uh, computer modeling that suggest that the, Dipl the Diplodocids could look between their legs easier than they could reach up high. Camarasaurus had the exact opposite in the studies and showed that they kept their necks up high feeding off the trees. So as a result, just like in Africa today, where you have elephants, rhinos, and giraffes living in the same area, you have the same thing going on in the late Jurassic. Camarasaurus, the baby, the CM11338, was an absolutely beautiful specimen, and you can find it on display in the Carnegie Museum as the original bone, but there are casts all throughout the United States. And rightly so, it is just neat to see this animal in all its glory. The Camarasaurus, uh, when extinct at the end of the Jurassic, there's been some suggestions that there were Camarasaurus hanging out in Europe in the early Cretaceous, but Camarasaurus appeared in the Jurassic, was very successful, is found in most every dinosaur quarry in the Western United States in the Jurassic, and then disappears. So something fundamentally changed and caused it to lose its ability to be one of the more abundant herbivores. Well, I hope you liked a little bit of information about Camarasaurus. We'll try to bring more at some point sooner than later. As always, like, subscribe. Please leave any comments below because we love to interact. And otherwise, have a wonderful day. Thank you kindly. Adios.